Should have had it like <laughs> didn't need that back. I could yeah. just left earlier. But yeah. Alright, so we're here. We're here with Lee. First video in the shed. First one on one sit down. Um Lee's awesome. He said he's promised me like where were we? I think it wasn't that long ago we said um I said, yeah. oh, would you, would you be up for a chat? Sun tour. Sun tour. At the sun tour. Last stage, I think it was, at the sun tour. Ran into each other and he said, yeah, no worries. So here he is. He's been on a ride. He's been down to Sorrento. And now he's popped into Frankston on the way home. So we'll start. Why don't you tell us, Lee, a bit about yourself? Um, um, where you are at the moment and what you're doing. So I'm 22. I'm not... Uh, I'm not currently studying, I go back to uni next semester. Yep. Um, doing a Bachelor of Business majoring in marketing. Yep. Um, and then hopefully next year or the year after I'll be doing like a grad program, which will be one year paid full-time inter internship, which I'll organize through university. Um, and that will be sort of, uh, I think, you know, when I do that, I'll probably be taking a bit of a backseat from my writing, but depends on you know, how my writing sort of progresses this year and next year and stuff. Um, because I only started, like, started racing the VRS in 2017 at Mansfield. So about yeah. three years ago next week or this week, depending on the weekend it falls. Yeah. Um, and I only did my first NRS race in 2018. So that was through Gippsland. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd say I'm rel relatively new to the sport compared yeah. to guys that have been you know, come up on the sport racing track and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and who've, you know, been around the block. So, sort of just see how I go this year. I'm not, like, holding out on any massive results, but if I could get, geez, even a stage win in an NRS, at an NRS race, or do a couple of UCI races in Asia for, you know, forbidding coronavirus puts an end to the UCI season, um, that'd be fantastic. Because, yeah, that'd yep. just be awesome fun. So, yeah, that's what I do. I'm a student and I race for Neo Continental, uh, Aussie Continental team. Yep. This is our first year as Conti. Last year we were just an elite domestic team. So um, your um, Continental team, Australian Continental team. Yeah. Um, and how would you, for everyone else who might not know, how's that compared to like World Continental and so, so then, world and then continental pro, I suppose you should say. Yeah, so like I said, I haven't been around for that long, so someone can correct me if I'm wrong. The way it's tiered is like there's world tour teams. Uh, you need a certain amount of UCI points to be a world tour team. So that's things like Trek Sega Fredo, Team Ineos, Bahrain Merida and stuff like that. Um, I think there's 18 or 20 teams or something. Below that is pro continental. Um, yep. So those teams, you're still a professional. Um, they, uh, riders can sort of graduate from Pro Conti to World Tour, riders go down from World Tour to Pro Conti, riders like Nari Quintana who were World Tour riding Pro Conti, Nicky Terpstra who rode for Eddie's Quick Step is now riding for that uh, Villa team yep. and stuff like that. There are more Pro Conti teams than there are World Tour teams I believe naturally, um, but you know the level standard isn't as high, yep. they don't have as much uh, money. Um, and they do different races, so typically the Pro Conti teams, only a few of them will do uh, World Tour races. A lot of them will do, I believe, UCI 1.1s and 1.2s. Then the level below that is Continental. Mm -hmm. um, so Continental is what we are. Uh, we race like, I think, UCI 2.1s, 2.2s. So we do elite domestic races in our country. So yep. that's in Australia, that's the National Road Series. Um, and then we, you know, we race again, but there's such a, you know, there's such a broad amount, there's so many continental teams, so yep. like, you know, some are bigger than others, like Futuro Pro Racing, the um, Queensland based team last year, they were continental, yep. then you have other continental teams like uh, Hartman's Berman Action, yep. like based in the US who are absolutely massive, teams like, uh, formerly like Wiggins, another absolutely massive team, um, you know, a huge budget, but they're still only continental, albeit they do get invited to some bigger races. And you guys um, and, do that as well, don't you? And so we're continental as well. Yeah. Where yeah. we fall into it, we wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't, we're not as big as um, 
you know, a team like Wiggins or HB Action or domestically maybe Bridge Lane. Yep. But like, you know, we're having a pretty good crack seeing it's our first year as a Conti team. You know, we weren't even, the team wasn't even a team four years ago. I think it was Sydney Uni Bello. Okay. So I think um, the guys who are on the team, Chris and Luke, have taken it to like, you know, they've invested a lot of time and money and yep. like, you know, passion into it. Um, and they've taken it from essentially just a few guys who go to university together or who are involved in the uni yep. to a pretty like serious racing team. Yep. Um, so yeah, they have my like a lot of my respect yep. and a lot of my thanks as well. 100%. So for you guys to go over to Asia, that's an invite, is it? Yeah, so you typically, you need to be invited to uh, the tours to enter in them. It's not like, you know, it's not like the AFL where yep. there's a max, match fixture and you know where you're gonna play and when and yep. who. Um, you get invited by the race organisers, um, how they determine who comes, uh, I'm not exactly sure, I guess it's based off of UCI points, um, like how much they, what it sort of exposure they'll give to um, the races and stuff like that, um, and yeah, like, so typically they'll send out a bunch of invites to certain teams, teams will accept them, um, in the case of right now a lot of teams are declining invites so then the race will send invites to other teams um so yeah that's that's how that works you get invited to race awesome yeah okay so before nero so that means you signed with them was it december 17 that you started with nero? yeah yeah december 2017 like you know i signed like the nrs contract for the team yeah and then 2018 i was wearing the kit okay cool was, um, yeah. and before that so it takes back before that what was your weekly cycling, I suppose? So you weren't with this team, you were racing club level? Yeah, so um, 2017, I was just riding with like a few mates for like South Melbourne Physio. Yep. Um, so yeah, basically South Melbourne is a sports physio. Um, they're still like a Masters A grade team now. Mm -hmm. um, and I still ride with them, still ride with those guys every week or every couple of weeks, try to do the shop ride on a Thursday morning. Yep. Um, and yeah, basically, um, Andy, who owns a physio, keen cyclist himself, new man, a friend of mine, Connor, were also really keen cyclist, and another local guy, Julian, from the States, um, and was like, you know, why don't we just give you guys a jersey and you can race as a team, you know, I'll help with that racing, provide a bit of support for you, and yeah, like, that sort of got me into racing, um, and it made it easier, like, it is expensive, you know, first year uni student, like, juggling uni, you know, wanting to train and wanting to also, you know, have money so I can go on race can be yep. quite difficult. So it was real, like, I'm eternally thankful for, like, Andy, just, like, you know, helping me out and getting me to races and stuff like that um, and giving me a chance to, like, you know, I didn't have to focus on work as much with his backing and, you know, I was able to put a little bit more time into training and racing yep. um, and could do more races as well. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, spent the whole year racing in the VRS um, so, you know, started VRS C grade at Mansfield and then went... For which club were you? Uh, well, so, like, signed with, like, Carnegie Caulfield Club. Yep. Like, you sign off on what club you want to join when you get a licence. Yep. But it doesn't mean you're actually, like, involved with the club. You just have to elect a club. Yep. They are my closest club. I do race with them every weekend at Glendale. Yep. Um, haven't raced Sandown this year. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so I was technically with Carnegie Caulfield. But I wouldn't say I have like a massive like, you know, I'm not super involved in the club like some. So there, was, there wasn't would. anyone at that club that kind of pushed you towards doing what you're doing now. It was more no, no, the blokes yeah. around you outside that. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you know I grew up playing. Um, I grew up playing tennis and basketball, and like you know going to Dela. So like there is a. Like you do have you do belong to a club and you have a sense of community with that. Yep. But in the case of cycling, I guess because it can be it can be like a real team sport, but it can also be a real individual sport, like depending on how you look at it. Yep. When I started riding, it was an individual sport for me. Yep. So I, I didn't really look when towards having what, a club. When did you kind of start say, hey, I actually want to give this a go? Like, when, um, when do you think that was? How old were you then, do you think? Uh, like, so I started riding, like I always had a bike and I rode everywhere. And then it was in year 12 in 2015. I might have done one ride a week or yep. every month, 
Um, just because, like, oh, I was like, I went for a ride one day. I was like, oh, this is pretty fun. So I borrowed my uncle's bike, rode that around a bit. Yep. And then it was like, when school finished, and it was like, going to uni, and then working a little bit, I was like, oh, I have so much time. Yep. So I was like, I'll just start riding a bit more often. So I started riding with a local, with a local group. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, they were like, they just taught me about road etiquette and stuff like that. And then I realized, oh, I was like, oh, I could probably, you know, you can ride every day if you want. Yep. Like, it's so low impact. Yeah. And so, yeah, in 2016, I started just riding like every day and just doing like a local group ride. Um, yep. It was every, like... Monday through Friday, I would do a loop down a Black Rock. Yep. Saturday, I would go to the hills, and then Sunday, I would ride down to Morty Alley. And I probably did that for like eight months. And I was like, far out, like, it started getting pretty like stale. So yep. I got an indoor trainer yep. and just started training on that. And then I was like, I was like, wow, you get so much fitter with this and like actually train to power. So I was like, I'm just gonna do a couple races. What was your go-to with um, your indoor stuff? What did you do? Train a road. Train I followed road. a program on there. Like yep. that's so, it's so unbelievably good, train a road. Like yep. for someone who like, if you don't, if you don't want to pay for a coach or you don't think you need a coach or you're like really struck for time, like just how like, how focused those sessions are and like the variety and the fact that you just like, you know, I don't know, some people might say erg mode's cheating, but like just like getting on the trainer and just having to turn your legs over and that changing the resistance for you and stuff based on your cadence and all that. It's just like, it's just like, it feels like a silver bullet. Like you get fit so quickly, just like without even having to think about it. Like yes. I've, I've been so much like Game of Thrones and like Parks and Recreation while I was just riding the train. Yeah, like, it feels like you're getting fit for free. Yeah, I had a lot of, I had a lot of people say in the past that um, they noticed a big difference in going from winter to summer when crit season came that everyone was fit already when the, all these yeah. new trainers came into it. Do you agree with that? Do you think that they really had a big impact in, like where everyone would kind of get fit together as the crit season went on, but then all of a sudden it, everyone was just fit and ready to go? Yeah, I think I, because like I said, I haven't been around that long, so it's hard for me to, like, I haven't seen it a heat, heat, but yeah, definitely, like, there's an old sort of thinking of training where in winter, like, you do longer, you know, you do longer miles, and you build up, you do a bit of load, but like, if it's foul, like, a lot of people aren't going to go outside, but yeah, once, once things like the Wahoo Kicker got popular, and like, Tax Neo, people were training more indoors, and you could do, like, that really focused specific stuff yep. um, on a, like not a, on a time budget yep. like you could do like you know 80 TSS every day you know so that's less than an hour like an hour at like pretty high intensity and yeah like you maintain a lot of fitness or you get really sharp through winter you might lose a little bit of endurance but that's pretty easy to get back yep and yeah when the crit season came around again you're sort of firing pretty early yep yeah awesome that's good and um, so with Nero, what like where, what did, did they have a goal? Where do they want to be? Like, um, so I think the goal, like Chris's goal, um, he might say different. This is what I thought it was. Was that yeah, he just wanted to build, you know, develop like a strong domestic team with a real like team focus. Like yep. we do really like going away with the boys on the weekends. We do like really does like we really do. I certainly think we feel like a team. Yep. Like everyone is there, you know, working for the same goal, whether that we, whether that be we're working for um, this person or that person, there is like a real sense of focus, yep. um, which is good. Like not everyone's there like, oh yeah, like I'll lead so-and-so out in the sprint, but you know, if I can sort of hold on a bit longer, I might be able to get myself a yep. good position. Like that's not, that's not, the attitude you guys have, it's yep. like everything is focused towards the team. Yep. So yeah, I think Chris would be proud of himself saying he can build, he built a real team yep. um, in that sense. Um, and the fact that it's developed, you know, going from a elite domestic team to, you know, getting podiums in the NRS to Sage wins to Tour wins to now being Continental, yep. I don't think he would have, I don't think he expected it would snowball that quickly. Yep. Like I remember, in 2018, Ben Van Dam at Tour of Great South Coast got a podium. Got a podium. He got second or third. 
and like we were like over the moon yeah like, it was awesome like that was like one of our first like big results and then last year in 2019 i remember at two of the two of the tweed sam hill got second or third on stage and we were just like oh, like just noticing like that difference in the attitude of how we took yep. the win it's like we that's when i sort of noticed the team change like it was like oh we like results of result yeah we driven the team to where it is basically. yeah exactly yeah. it's changed them we're like we're no longer settling for um you know we're not no longer coming to get third or second like we want to do well yep so yeah that's certainly how i've interpreted things yep awesome. um whether or not that was the goal of the team um someone else might say something different but that's certainly what i've seen has happened yep. so yeah and it's cool in that sense you know our standards get higher and yep. hopefully we rise to those standards yep oh awesome so when you just touched on before there are um your training weekends so how often do you do them as sorry so when i mean like this is like weekends away like racing with the team and okay, stuff like that yep um but yeah i'd consider like last week jay dylan and i went and did three peaks yep. even though the whole team wasn't there i'd consider that yeah like a training weekend yep um mansfield next week where it's only going to be lee jay and i uh leo jay and i um that'll be the same thing like that'll be pretty fun yeah a lot of the other guys going over to Turutsuji in japan mm -hmm. um which should be awesome for them so i expect that'll get hopefully a good result there yep um but yeah that's what i mean by like a team weekend yeah okay. and they're just it's just fun like catching up with them because we're so spread out like we've got one guy in bendigo two of us in melbourne the rest in sydney one guy in brisbane one in canberra it's yep. nice all being together seeing each other after maybe you know sometimes a week at a time or sometimes three months at a time yeah and catching up and seeing how our riding's going so it's all individual when you train as well like you don't have a is there a team structured training program or is it all just individually? it's all tailored to the individual so yep. we can bring our own coach into the team yeah. Um, if we want, which I did do, but I'm now coached by Jesse, who's a member of the team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, like you know, they do the training they want. Uh, the team knows what sort of training they're doing, and then you know, um, it all comes together for the race weekend. Okay. So everyone does, you know, gets fit how they will. Yep. Awesome. I've um, recently read that there is probably ninety percent of the guys on your team are vegans. Um. A, yeah. is that true? And B, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, um, no, that certainly is true. Um, I couldn't believe it when we were at team camp how many guys were veg or vegan. Yep. Um, which is, like, great. Like, they're all doing it for their own reason, whether it be, um, you know, about sustainability, uh, whether it be for about animal cruelty or just, like, a lifestyle choice they think is healthier. Yep. That's cool. Like, I've tried it. Um, how long did it last? Uh, I started at team training camp in November and then I lasted five days after that <laughs> um, basically I'll admit I watched Game Changers the night before the team camp yep. and then I got to team camp and I was like all like there's more vegetarian food than there is actual like yep. omnivore food so I was like I'll just have the vegetarian food as well like yep. and try it and yeah I cracked after going to the Coogee Bar Hotel and getting pizza yep. which was really nice but um, yep. yeah you know Twitch in their own yeah, like yeah. I don't think, you know, but I'm not like, I think anything worse than, um, something worse than someone being like, you know, not eating meat, like eating meat is like murder and stuff is someone who's like vehemently anti-vegan. Like yep. that's just gross. Like with someone, yeah, they yeah. don't want to eat meat, they don't have to. Like yep. they're allowed to be vegan. It's just, it's their choice. It's not affecting you. Yep. If anything, there's more for you to eat, so you should be thanking them. Yep. Cool. So basically, I was, I was, I was touched on it earlier. So. In your family, was there is there cyclists, or are you kind of the first? Um, yeah. So like, my mum and dad were pretty like sporty. Like, mum played netball at like the highest level in Australia up until awesome. when she had like me. That's um, where so yeah. Form, no. Ah, uh, well, yeah. From her side of the family, all my uncles are like yep. six five, six six. Yep. Um, you're six. I'm about six four. Six, six four. four, five. I don't know. It depends what day it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so she played netball at a really high level, and then Dad was like an amateur 800 meter runner, and then he turned to like triathlon. Yep. So he did like he would do like Noosa. I think he did it four or five. Oh, 
maybe four or five times. Um, and you know, I remember going some mornings to see him down on Beach Road do a triathlon, or going to Noosa to do a triathlon. Yeah. Um, and then he sort of got into riding after that. And then so there was always like he was always going for a ride with his friends and stuff. Um, and then I sort of got into it. My cousin worked at a bike shop, and like he was like mad about bikes, and then he like. He sold me like a fixie he used to use and him and I would go do like the Monday night fixie rides in Melbourne. Um, and so that was, that helped like get me interested in training and racing and stuff like that. Yep. Just like, yeah, so it just sort of came about as like, my parents were pretty fit people. Yep. Um, and then my cousin I was, act was actually someone I could go out and ride with. Yep. So yeah, that's sort of how I got into it really. Cool. Um, that's what, that's sort of one of the avenues I got into it through. Like, I could attribute it to a couple of things, but yeah, that's one of them. Yep. Awesome. So, as a, racing in a team, how many are you expected to do a certain amount of kilometers a week? Uh, are you expected to hit a certain amount TSS for a week? What What is it that? Yeah, I suppose it's like based on like what you're training for, and yeah, there is like the fact that you're I'm running with the team, and that they have you know I'm coached by a member of the team, um, a teammate. Um, and that the team can see all the training I'm doing, it creates a certain level of accountability. Yep. So it's not like I can just be like, if the team couldn't see the training I was doing, like I could take like three weeks off and then it comes to like a month from say Tour of Brisbane, um, you know, which is soon. Um, and then they're like, oh, you're fit, like you're fit, you're gonna be able to finish the race. And it's like, I haven't done three weeks training, but they don't know that. They're like, yeah, I'm flying. Like, yep. I'm firing all, on all fronts. Yep. But like the fact that they can see, they'll be like, according to today's plan, you haven't touched a bike in three weeks. Yep. It's like, oh, well, yep. okay, I actually have to do the training. Yep. But that's never been like a problem for me because I just like riding. Yep. So like getting out and doing training most days, most weeks isn't too difficult for me. Yep. Maybe maybe this last week it was. Like I did did the warning a like a month bit, ago. Tell us a bit about the warning. So the lead up to the warning riding wise, was that just base long kilometers or was Yeah, that... yeah. Trying to get like um I probably did like one or two rides a week, like around a five and a half, six hour mark. Yep. And certainly, you know, I started pretty slow doing that in like um, December, like I would do a long ride every one or two weeks. Um, and then a bit less intensity on those rides, just more getting out and spending time in the chamois. Yeah. Um, and then like it was going over the tour down under, that was a massive week, like 14, 1500 TSS week, like, you know, following the race around and doing our own little training rides. And, you know, the shortest ride we did would have been four and a half, five hours. Yeah. And doing that Monday through to Sunday. Um, so that sort of got my body ready for like dealing with that load and then yep. had an easy week after the tour down under just cruising around and then like yeah just built up to the warning doing like bigger longer k's yeah it's like you know you sort of started slow but um you know did a few rides close to the warning where i was like oh like i'd actually be happy if that was the warning itself like that was yep. six hours Less and i chaos. was zone three the whole time but yeah like certainly not as much chaos how like, so you know, with the, yeah fit. with the warning um, was it what you expected? Um, yeah, it certainly wasn't as scary as everyone, like I'd never done it. Yep. A lot of people made it out to be quite a like, super hectic start. Like the first, you know, 40, 50 K is this madness and there's always a crash and it's super fast. Yep. Um, so like I had that playing in the back of my mind. So I was like, oh, I definitely got to um, like just make sure I do something at the start. So like, what was your game plan? Did you have a game plan going into it? Uh, the team certainly had a plan. Like we, um, like we wanted, of course, someone on the podium, but we needed guys. There's always going to be a break that goes in that race and a big one. Yep. We wanted guys in the break. How many guys from Nero, Nero did that? We uh, we had ten of seven. Yep. Um, and we got two guys in the break. Be it, it was a big break, so like they weren't the best odds. Like yep. we'd always like, why not have, you know, we always want to have like one in four, two in eight, yep. you know, three in 12 or whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah, we only had two guys, but you know, that's just how the race planned out on the day. Um, like the first, um, you know, 50, 70 Ks, we were pretty active, like chasing moves off the front and being like, you know, being a little bit reactive, like it's a long day, we want to be a little bit conservative, not be like burning yep. matches super early. Um, then unfortunately, like we missed one move 
I think it was like 90 k's in, and then we had to chop like seven of us were on the front chopping off to bring it back. Yeah. And we brought it back in a sort of crosshead section. Yep. Um, so thankfully we didn't have to do that for too long. Um, and then like it split apart on a hit on one of the KOMs, then came back together. And then at some point, I think it was like 130 k's in, a break apparently established itself. And we had two guys in it. And yep. um, yeah, we were like to them, well, well, we were like, all right, you know, let's stay near the front of the peloton in case guys want to go across and try to follow them. Otherwise, um, we got to back our guys in the break, really. Yep. Um, so, you know, just get, make sure they're sitting on and save themselves for the end of things. Yeah. Um, because it's a long race. Yep. Yeah. So that was sort of our plan. 270, was it? Is it? 200, it was 268 this 268. year. It had to slightly change the course. Yep. Um, so, yeah. No, but it was like awesome fun race. Like, and results wise, how did you just go with that? Oh, not, not fantastically. I think um, I think I went a bit hard at the start, like chasing moves and stuff. And about the, right after, through Port Campbell, there was like a 30k stretch where I was just like chop, like swapping turns in the peloton, just staying at the front. Then I sort of like, I was like, oh, I'm just going to like sit up for a bit and take it easy. And then I, pull, I pulled out of rolling turns and then I realised I was like, oh god, it's actually way harder back here than up the front, which it always is. Yep. Um, and like, at that point, the breakaway had like, was definitely gone. Harder because of how... Because like rolling turns, you've got, you know, you get, it's hard when you're moving up, but then you've got, um, you're easing back and you're, hot, you're in the wind, but like, you know, it's pushing you back and then once you start to move, once you move back, start to move up again, you get protected from the guys beside you. Then the guy's back here outside the echelon. It's like yep. single file and throwing out. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's pretty stupid of me. Like I just sat up and was like, I want to have a breather. And then yeah, I was like, far out. It's actually so much harder back here. Yeah. Um. So then I just sort of like, I turned to Ben, one of my teammates, who was like coming past me while I was going backwards, and I was just like, I'm done. Like I'm so knackered. Like and I'm what happy came, to Where were you? What? It was 230 k's in. So there wasn't days. heaps to go. Yeah. Um, but I was like, the race is sort of over. Yep. Um, why, well, you know, burst a lung trying to yep. finish with this group. So I'm um, sat up and then a friend of mine um, who'd gotten like picked slightly earlier caught me and then we just had an awesome chat for the last 38 k's into the line. Yep. We got caught by a massive group 10 k's to go and we just cruised in with them. So you'd do it again? Oh yeah, 100%. Yep. Um, looking at like hopefully I can do Grafton, which I did last year, which yep. was like so much fun. Yep. Um, like that's like yeah the north's answer to the warning yeah um whether it's harder i think that's up yeah i think that's up for debate like i think um grafton by the numbers was certainly harder yeah like that was a 460 tss day last year whereas the warning was like 400 yeah but like i think mentally the warning was just more taxing leading into it because thinking about like oh the first 50 k is so hectic yeah and then during the race i was like god you're going so fast for periods here like yep. touch your wheels and go nice so over tip like i was just that was playing in my mind whereas graft and it was sort of like someone had broken it up for me it's like the first 80 k's is a bit like hectic but like you're practically going in a straight line on the highway yep. and then you get to the bottom of the gibraltar climb and it's a 40 minute like you know if you've been diable, it's a 40 minute climb. Yep. Like, you know, and so I was like, okay, so I got like 45 minutes, 50 minutes to like just climb, which yep. is mentally easy because it's like, yeah, all you got to do is just like pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get over the top, and then, um, you know, it's a race from the top to the next feed zone. And, but yeah, it was sort of like, I think Grafton for me is more broken up into like three separate races. Yeah. Like, it's a race to the bottom of the climb. Yep. to race up the climb and to race from the top to the end. Yep. Um, so that, for some reason, made it feel easier for me. Whereas yep. the warning was like, start to finish, it's like, it's just one thing. Yep. So That's what, how I rationalise 270 k is what's your average for that speed was? Uh, I think, like, I think because I, um, when I put my hands up, I think by the end of the ride, I did like 40 something. Yep. So it was like the group I was with did like, you know, 41, because I was obviously going yeah. a bit slower that last bit. And average power for something like that as well. I think I did, I think I did like, by the time I pulled out, I had done 265 or 270 watts. Yep. 
and then to the end it, that had gotten down to 250 or something because yep. I was just like tapping away yeah Right. That's that's a relative term, like I'm like 75 yep. kilos yep. and stuff like that. And I think that's what I think, like sitting at like lone zone, like that zone three, low zone three sort of suits me a bit more. I don't yep. know, like my physiology seems to like it. So yeah, that's yep. not too bad. Like that's what I did riding here, I did 270. So that was 55 k's and then yep. riding down to Sorrento last night was 260, which was you know, three hours, like, yep. that's just sort of something I'm pretty comfortable sitting at. It's awesome. Cool. Um, what else can we ask? You've got to get going through day. That's okay. right, ask, ask your way, that's good. Um, so yeah, okay, with uh, Nero, their bikes, so this new brand that you've got, um, how do you say it, Devel? Devel, yeah. Devel. So Devel stands, I think the name of the brand is the branding is Devel, but the name of the business or the company is Development Projects. Okay. So they're a Philippine-based bicycle manufacturer. I think they were being manufactured in the Philippines, and they just moved. Annoyingly, they just moved production to China. Rise of Corona broke out. Yep. Um, and they actually design their own frames. Like they have their own molds and stuff. Yep. So it's like the Devels wear on. I think it's the. Forgive me, like the Devel A01, which is the Aero 1, the top yep. of the range model. That's like, that's not like a Canyon Ultimate from a few years ago or an old giant propel. Like, that's a Devel. Like, that's the first time you've seen that frame. Yep. Obviously, it's a modern era frame, so it takes notes from a lot of other brands, like, you know, uh, D shaped tubes, a oh, drop, rear, yep. drop rear stays, and stuff like that. Yep. But yeah, that's its own thing. Yep. Um, and then we're specced out, thank we're specced out with like Campagnolo, yep. so we're running a record or super record, yep. um, and black ink cockpits, yep. and Campagnolo wheels, and um, yeah, the Devel bikes, the boys are really happy with, like, yep. they're, they're a fast bike, like, they're not, being an aero bike, they're not the lightest bike in the world, and it's not like Campag's the lightest group set, but yep. certainly hard wearing, yep. which is good, um, and that's what you want, um, but like, you know, the boys like, yeah, they're nice, like they're really stiff. Yep. Um, you do get a bit of feedback from the road, like even for a carbon fiber bike. Yep. Um, but you know, that just means like, you know, stiffer, you know, should translate to faster really. Yep. Um, but yep. yeah, despite that, you know, matching it with 60 mil tubeless tires on the borers, it's like how stiff it is, like how harsh that ride is is sort of offset by that. So yeah, yep. the boys are like, yeah, it feels like, when you're on it, it feels like a real sort of racing machine. Yeah. So like, sadly, I haven't got mine just yet. I'll get that next month. Yeah. Um, just because of, yeah, like, the manufacturing process, we had to get the bikes early and then, yep. um, you know, coronavirus outbreak knocked things back. Yeah. But yeah, I've just got like everything. I built myself a new set of wheels yep. um, to train on for it. Um, and then yeah, I've got everything sitting at home. I'm just waiting to get my hands on the frame and build it up in my garage. Awesome. So that should be good. So you right? What's so you're six four, six five. So what size frame are you on? So I'm on the biggest frame Devel make, which is a fifty eight. Fifty eight. Um, but effectively, that's only a centimeter or half a centimeter shorter than my Ultra XR three, yep. which is met, which is a sixty one. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that lends itself to how aggressive like the Devel frames are. That yep. They are like a pure race machine. Yep. Given you know, um, even though it's technically like it's small frame, like the reach is that long. Yep. Um, you know, the head tube is that short, and that sort of stuff. Yep. That's how like the angles are very so aggressive. Yep. So yeah. Should so be. you talk about the reaches that long. You're currently running the 190. Yeah, 190. 190 mil stem yeah. on the Bianchi. What are you gonna do with the? Um, I really like the stem I'm running at the moment. Like it's you know I've been running it for like six or seven months. Like it feels comfortable now. Yep. Um, you know the problem is the bike I'm on now is pretty heavy. Like, yep. and I'm sort of sick of that. And like. Black Ink have been really good to us and they've given us like a bar stem, com like a bar and stem. So I think when I get the Devel, I'm going to run a different stem, but it's going to be carbon fiber. Yep. And so I'm going to focus more on having a bit of a weight weenie build rather than something super aggressive. Yep. Um, so yeah, I may 
I may or may not run the 190 or stem just yet. I'm yep. unsure. When when it comes to heavy, what's heavy for the Bianchi? What what is that? The weight of it. My training setup without without bottles, without a gun, without a saddlebag, without lights, um, is a bit over 90 kilos. That is heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And what so, are you yeah. aiming to get? Like what? Well, ideally, the Devel. What um, weight are you aiming to get? So I think with like the Bora 45 like carbon wheels we've got, it's they're like 7.4. Yep. Which like people are like oh it's pretty heavy but it's like yeah but it's like it's a disc frame it's not the lighter it's Campagnolo it's not the it's not as though it's the widest group set in the world. Yep. But it's really reliable. It's really hard wearing. Like it lasts a while. Um, but then I've also, you know, I've got my own carbon saddle I'm going to put on it. And then I've built my own set of wheels to train on, which I wanted to build something light. So they're like, you know, I've built them with titanium skewers and CX ray spokes and yep. lightweight alloy rims, alloy hubs and stuff. So they weigh at the moment a bit less than C24s. So I want that to, I want hopefully mine to weigh like C2 or something. Which I'd be happy with, like relative to what I am running. It's For like, a big frame, this that's bike. a dream. Yeah. 100. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. That'd be a dream. That's good. Awesome. So your next next few races, have you got anything coming up? What's in there? What's next? Um, do like to Mansfield hopefully next week if that isn't cancelled because yep. of coronavirus. Yep. Um, that would be like that's always a fun race. That'd yep. be the third time I do it. Yep. Um, you know, our team won it last year and we had first and third on the podium. Yep. So if we can get a win this year, that'd be good. It's the team. Yep. Um, then after that... Will that be three of you? Yeah. It'll just be three of us, yep. yeah. Um, yep. When I say a win, like just one of us winning yep. for a podium, that's a win. Yep. Um, and then after that is Tour of Brisbane. Yep. Which is, I think, a month away. Yep. Uh, and that's going to be Oshies as well. So hopefully, if I can do, I hopefully I can do that. Depends on who's picked for the team. Yep. I think after that it's Grass and Tune Grill, which once again, hopefully, if I pick for that, I get to do that. It was so fun last year. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's fun just like, you know, packing your bike up and saying that my boss, who I, I work in bike shops, so he's pretty forgiving. Yeah, work like, in the bike shop, yeah. Yeah, he's just like, oh yeah, I'm just like, yeah, just going up to Grafton, racing, catching a plane there, and yep. hanging out with the team. Like, that's the best part of it, just like, yep. having fun with the boys. Like, yep. racing's one thing, but like, spending time training with them and racing with them is even more fun. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. What? So where's your bike shop that you're working? Uh, just at Ashburton Cycles. So like, sort of like, you know, it's not like a high-end road or mountain bike shop, it's just like, Commuter bikes and kids' bikes, yeah. Yeah, bikes. Well, if you're in the area, go see him and yeah, say, exactly. say hello. Yeah. He'll look after you. That'd be good. Yeah, drop a review on Google as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. The old Google, eh? Have I written down anything else? I wrote a few notes. Um, so, one bit random one. Like, if you were CEO of Cycling Australia tomorrow, would there be anything you'd change? Or what would be the first thing you'd change? Oh, that's... Oh. I don't know, that's such a... It's a, I know it's I, a keep, uh, I, like, I like to keep my... I like to keep my... Like, out of the politics and all that sort of yep. stuff. I don't like to pay attention to it. Because there's like, a lot of it, isn't there? Yeah, a lot of people like see... Like Stephen Drake, or I'm pretty sure he's a CEO do something and then go, oh, well, you know, that's dumb, you should do this. It's like, it's pretty easy to say that when you're not doing, when you're actually not the one making the decisions. Yep. Um, I don't know, maybe like getting rid of, I think this is what a lot of, what has been done, getting rid of like CV, Cycling New South Wales, Cycling Western Australia, just bringing everything under Cycling Australia. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, so Tour Mansfield wouldn't be run by Cycling Victoria, it'd be run by CA. Yep. And you know, B to B on this weekend would be run by CA. Um, and just having like a more centralized sort of way of the sport is run and conducted. Yep. Um, Do you find it very different? So races that you go to in Victoria opposed to Queensland, do you notice differences? Uh, yeah, like, depends on who's running them. Like, a lot of the stuff in Victoria is run by, like, GTR events. Yep. Um, who do, like, a really good job. Like, it's really cool having, they'll have, like, a, 
electronic board on the side of the on the side of the road and they got they put up the banners and they put up that they put up the barriers and there's like a cool start finishing line like they do a good job of that and then like through the tropics last year that was run by the local cycling club who had never actually run an nrs event but like they did they did an awesome job of that like it's sort of like if you're not really looking for it you don't really notice but yep. um it wasn't until um like the team manager or ds luke told me that like that was the first time they were running an event i was like oh so different different like groups run the nrs events like it's not all run by the same people yep. then you sort of notice oh at the races in victoria we have that cool banner but up here like there's free meal after oh, not that there was a free meal but like they just do things slightly differently yep. but yeah you know like, i don't i don't notice an enormous difference yep. uh, it's not until someone actually points it out you go oh yeah yep. yeah that's different yeah yep. okay cool all right, we'll try and we'll try and wrap it up now. Okay, so your your favourite ride in Melbourne here to do, just as a either a training ride or whatever ride it may be. I'd say North Road Long. North Road Long. Yeah, Wednesday mornings corner of uh, North Road and Nepean Highway at five forty five. Yep. Um, chopping down to Frankston, Mount Eliza Loop, regroup at the top two bays, and then chop all the way back up to North Road or St Kilda. Yep. Like, not many other rides I can. You know, I can leave on a Wednesday morning, I can be home at like 8 o'clock, quarter past 8. Yep. Oh, sorry, quarter past 8, 8.30, and have done like 110 Ks, racked up like 170 TSS, or like some days, like if it's re- if I'm feeling really good, like rack up 190 TSS. Yep. Um, it's yeah. It's been over like, two hours. What is it? A bit over two and a half hours? It's like, it'd be like, yeah, two hours, like, by the time from door from my house back to my house, like it'd be like two forty five on yeah. average. But yeah, like so your perfect kind of training smash fest, get it. Done, yeah, exactly. It's like a race, and so like you can get home and then go to work at nine o'clock if you want. Yep. Um, not that I have Wednesdays off, but like yeah, it's just like oh, you don't even have to think about it. It's always such a fun ride. Yep. Um, the guys that do it are always strong. Yep. Uh, just like all the diesel engines that just do like the North Road and stuff like that. Yep. Um, yeah, there's nothing like, it's such a, it's a real like get fit quick type was of that, ride. Was that the one that was started by the tri- triathletes, was it? Was that one? Or was that... I don't know, I haven't yeah. been around long enough to know. What about, um, so out of all the club racing, like you got Hawthorne, you got the Teardrop with Sandown, you yeah. got Glenville, um, Mulgrave there, and a couple others, I think there's a few, there's a couple of nor- new ones in the North maybe, but... What's your favourite club? Um, it was St Kilda, just because of the atmosphere. Yep. Um, and I like riding, like I like doing a sort of cruisy ride on the beach before and after that. Yep. I like where it was in South Melbourne because I used yep. to work around there, so it's like it's just cool around there. Yep. Um, I thought it was a fun circuit because you could sort of you could go there and have like a day where you average like in the bunch like. 260 watts in A grade and like just get around and not do anything yeah and it's easy but like you can have another day where um you if you're really active and stuff like that you could average you know 330 watts yeah uh, and those two people could have done the same race yeah like that's why it was good so you know you could sort of if you wanted to you could sort of bring the pain but otherwise you could still sit in take it easy but work on like race craft and trying to like save energy and see what sort of result you can get yep and just yeah the atmosphere of it it was always fun um i also like hawthorne like i'm really bad at it like, job, I hate, yeah i really hate it but like the guys who do that are like the strongest right i've heard it's the hardest so yeah it's like there's a reason for that because it's like yep. you know it's a technical course like that corner is like not as easy as it looks like it's never easy doing the, practically the 100 the yeah yep. And, you know, it's just like there are two intervals, like you're doing like, or sprint intervals, like you're doing 30 seconds, absolutely um, balls to the wall. And yep. then you're recovering on downhill and then someone's going to attack on the back straight and you have yep. to do it again right before hitting that hill again. Yep. Um, yeah, which I absolutely hate. And like, I hate myself. I did, I did like the first six of the season. I was like, oh, I'm getting way fitter. And then I didn't do one. I, I haven't done one till last week before last year. And like I'm like, where well, everyone is so fit. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that if you can do it every week, that's the best crit in Melbourne. Yep. Um, otherwise Glenvale is just like always hard. Because even though it's like sort of flat, you just can't sit in. Like yeah. up yeah. the front it's hard, up the back it's hard. Like for a 
semi flat circuit, it's always on. Yep. What about um? What do you think of Sandown? Uh, apparently, Sandown's going to knock me around in two years either. Yeah, um, Sandown. I haven't done this year. I did it last year. I really do like. It's sort of like it's just a bit different. It's more. It feels more like a road race. It doesn't feel like a crit race. Yeah. Like, cause it is like three k's or something. Like it's like it's a commis or whatever. Yeah. Um. The only reason I don't do it more often is Tuesday nights is pretty awkward for me. Like yep. it's hard to get there. Yeah. Um. So that's the only thing stopping me. And it's like. It's a rubbish ride out there on Dan Rong Highway. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, that's the only way there. It's yep. just like crap. So many drivers. Um. And you know you've got the sun. You've got the sun on your back, and like some people, you know, people turning out, of, turning out like into the service lane out of the side street are looking at the sun, and then yep. they can't see you even though your lights are on. Yeah. And then um, the ride home, it's always cold. It doesn't matter Freezing. how. Yeah. Doesn't matter how warm it was when you start. It's always cold. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then if you choose to drive out, you've just missed the race because it's like, it, from my house, it's like 15 k's, but it takes you an hour because yep. it's just like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the only reason I would like, if it was more convenient for me, I'd, I'd probably do sand down every every day if I could. Yeah. Um, it's just it happens to be what time it is and where it is. It yep. doesn't suit. Yeah, it's a great like great fun circuit. Cool. Yeah, and it's not like it doesn't suit any one type of rider. I think anyone can win there. Yeah. Because you do everything. You have climb fast, technical, and then there's a long spring if you haven't gone already. So yep. yeah. With the headwind. Normally. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it depends on how it's going. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I think we'll um, I think we've touched everything. We'll probably wrap it up. Awesome. And thank you, mate. Thanks That's for being right. the first one in the shed. It's awesome. It's awesome fun. It's good to catch up. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. That's gonna be it. Thank you, Lee. And um, thank you. yeah. Hopefully, there's plenty more of these because um, that was good fun. Comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and um. Pop in and see Lee at Ashburton Cycles if you if you're around. Definitely, yeah, I'll do the deal. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys.